Hello, my friends. It's Miss Mo with Miss Mo's Vegan Kitchen. Let's fix that a little bit. Better? <laughs> How are you today? Messy hair day, which means it's a hot day. <sighs> okay, coming to you for my lunch. So we have some of the sushi. The reason why it's that color is from the bottom of the Instant Pot. This is my favorite. It's got all the, like, crispiness of the sesame oil and the sugar. So good. So this is all, of the, I'm just making a sushi bowl with all the stuff from last night. So, we're not wasting anything. And then we're going to keep some for summer rolls, but we have more if we need to cut more. So, how is everybody doing today? Hope you're all having a lovely day today. It's gorgeous out. It's cold, but the sun is shining and it is so nice out. We just got back from doing a kitchen tour of this cute little place. Oh my gosh, we love it. And we got the job. So new client starting tomorrow. That's it my friends. Never give up on your dreams, do you hear me? If you want something, chase it. Go for it, make it happen. Make it happen. Make it yours, make it real. Live your dreams, baby. We are. So, yeah, we start there tomorrow. Every two weeks for now, on Thursday mornings. And then, those um, desserts that you saw me make, possibly going to be in a brand new local cafe that's only been open for like three weeks. They asked locally in Facebook groups where they could get some vegan goodies to sell in their cafe. And like a bunch of people tagged me. So. Mm. We brought him those. And we'll see how it goes. Mm. It's not too far from our house. Oh wow, that's really bright. So, from the kitchen that we rent, It is a little bit further, but I'll show you my towel, Mickey Mouse. This is so good, friends. See, if you don't want to make the sushi actual rolls, just throw it in a bowl. Whatever. Same thing. If you want the nori sheets, just crinkle them up and put them on top. Mm. So now this afternoon I'm going to contact two other cafes that said that they were interested in having our products in their store. Hmm. Because in order for it to make it worth us, worth it for us to rent the kitchen, it's sticking out like that. Look at that. Ugh. We have to get a few. And now that we have made a name for ourselves in the neighborhood, once we have our products in a store or cafe, 
I'm just going to get our name out there even more because we're going to advertise for them. They're going to sell the product, bring them new customers because one is a vegan place, but the other two aren't. So it's really going to get them a new crowd. And hopefully new customers for both of us, right? Win-win situation. Um, a lot of our neighborhood is really into supporting local, which is amazing. So when they know that they have sourced it from a small mom and pop shop, <laughs> mom and son shop, we're bringing out a new word, new phrase. Mm. They'll be super excited. I can't even friends. The universe rains absolute blessings upon us sometimes. And it's just a matter of whether we want to see them as a blessing or a hindrance, right? So Because I was talking about something good, now let me talk about something not bad. And at one point I would have thought that it was sad, but now I'm victorious. I came out of it, so I'm going to talk to you about it. And that's my depression. my grief so my mom rest her soul I've touched on the subject of my mom's depression um, and how she had bipolar and many hospital stays over her years, right? So, I'm very thankful that the blessing of my mom was put into my life, obviously. Because even though she had her weak moments, she was very strong. Such a strong personality. Hmm. And I also want to do this today because on January 30th, it's my mom's birthday, and my mom do that as a happy day instead of talking about something depressing. So I want to get this all out now. <laughs> so, I've always had terrible, terrible anxiety. And I just kind of have different coping methods and mechanisms that work for me. I don't know what works for everybody else. Obviously, we're all different. So for myself, My depression started when my mom got diagnosed with cancer. And that would have been <clears throat> nine years ago now. She had fallen off of the um, wraparound porch at the cottage.
and broke her wrist. But while she was in the hospital getting checked for that, they were making sure that she didn't break anything else, you know, because she really fell hard. And they noticed a spot on the bottom of her foot. Well, they asked her what it was and she said, I don't know. My mom was very um, immobile at times. <clears throat> so she wasn't able to look at the bottom of her foot. Well, they did x-rays. And they did a biopsy and found out that it was cancer. Hmm. So then that led to all kinds of things. They tried to cut away the cancerous part. And at first it worked. But then it stopped working. And the cancer started to grow back again. So. Mm, they decided to cut away an even bigger part. And do a skin graft from her leg. To put it on that part of her foot. I'm sorry if this is um, gross to some people, but that's the way our life was, right? And the graft didn't take. So, it was pretty bad. I don't have to explain everything about my mom because I want this to be more to talk about my depression but I'm trying to do that so that you see how it started and where my head was at and what I was dealing with. My parents lived up north, about two hours from here. And my mom was getting treatment at Sunnybrook. And Princess Margaret at one point. <clears throat> but the Odette Center was where she was going most of the time. My mom was my best friend. I'm filming, hun. So, I won't be too long. I have to walk the dog anyway. So, Mm. Seeing my mom go through all of that, she had to do chemo, she had to do radiation. They had her doing all kinds of pills to try and kill all the cancer cells. They were doing all kinds of tests. Well, that started my depression because I was so worried about my mom all the time, but I was having to take care of her, take care of my family trying to work um it just it was a lot a lot 
Excuse me. And, you know, you can be as strong as you want to be in front of the person, but then when you leave, obviously, that's what affects you the most. So when I was in front of my mom, I hardly ever showed my actual emotions because I knew that she needed me to be strong for her. But I just started to sink into like being quiet, not wanting to do things with people. Um, I rock like if I'm, I don't know, like if you're in a rocking chair, if my anxiety is high or if I'm stressed out a lot, I get really cold fingers. Um, my teeth chatter sometimes if it's really bad. So I was getting all of these symptoms, I guess. And um, then as time went on, my mom went through many different treatments. The cancer ended up traveling through her lymph nodes. So they took care of that. And then it went to different parts of her body. At one point they were going to amputate because it was traveling through her legs. Um, it was just traveling everywhere through her body. Well, in the end, um, it started to really affect me a lot more because she was starting to get much more ill, forgetting things, not taking her pills for her manic depression, and then that would affect her even worse. Um, so when she passed away, it was, I mean, it was horrible the way that it happened because the cancer at that point had spread to her brain. So the last couple of days were really not fun. That being said, I'm just so thankful that I was able to be there. I was holding her hand till the very last breath and it was beautiful. So when she passed away, it took a good year and a half for me to um, feel normal again. I went through, I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to shower. I didn't want to eat. And if I did eat, I only wanted it to be junk food. Um, I was just tired, sad, um, not wanting to be alive myself. And I'm really lucky that I made it through. Just put it that way. And the only thing that did help me make it through was my family. Because if it wasn't for Axel and Kevin, I don't know where I would be. But that's okay. I don't need to think about that. Because they're here and so am I. So I just wanted to, again, say that there is an absolute beautiful light at the end of your dark tunnel. If you are experiencing some depression or if you are having troubles with anything that you're having in life. There is absolutely a beautiful light at the end of that dark tunnel. Don't forget, fight for it. Absolutely fight for it. It took me a lot to get out of this depression this time. I'm not even gonna lie. So I started small. I started setting a schedule kind of to get up, take care of myself, which was shower, shave, you know, all of those things and try and at least make myself feel good instead of on the outside and because then I was hoping that it would kind of transfer to how I was feeling on the inside and slowly it did I started to feel a little bit better I started to take multivitamins um, because I figured that I wasn't eating properly so I needed all of those nutrients and then I started um, thinking about all the things that made me happy when I was younger with my mom and the biggest thing was music and cooking so I started playing music and I started cooking and at first it was super simple stuff. Some of it wasn't even cooked. It was raw stuff. But at least I was throwing it together. So if it was a salad or whatever. Yeah. Excuse me. And then the more that I did it, the more that I enjoyed it. I decided to enroll in a entrepreneur course at University of Toronto School of Management, Rotman School of Management, sorry. And I only remember two of the classes out of them all because I was still in a depressive state. So I have a lot of written stuff from the class, but I honestly don't remember it, which is really odd. I would love to do the program again because it was great, but can't. Um, so that got my hamster going on the wheel. 
and got the idea in my head that maybe I could do this. Maybe I would fight and maybe I would finally go after my dream because my mom had always wanted me to do it and we had wanted to do it when we were younger, but we never did. And I was like, what am I waiting for? You know, my mom passed away before she saw that dream come true. Well, I'm hoping that I didn't have to. So I thought I'm just going to go for it. So I decided that I was going to enroll in George Brown College, get some the vegetarian cooking courses, register my business, go and get my food handlers updated because I hadn't had it in years. And Axel is now my partner. And that's what we do. So it's been a wild ride, <laughs> a very long ride, but a beautiful ride at the same time. So it's kind of a shortened version of everything that I went through, obviously, in those eight years, but you get the gist. It was not fun. It was not good. And in the end, it was very bad. And I don't wish that on anybody. So my friends, thank you for watching. It really makes a difference in my life. <laughs> you are a huge light in my bright tunnel now. <laughs> I love you so much. Keep watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you know when we upload a new video. Stay blessed. Thank <laughs> you.